Irish genealogy from the Hedge School at www.irishroots.com. Oh, Father dear, I oft times hear you speak of Erin's Isle. Her lofty scenes, her valleys green, her mountains are rude and wild. They say it is a lovely land wherein a king might dwell. So why did you abandon it? The reason do me tell. Welcome to the Irish Genealogy Head School Sessions. Now, you know those head schools be ba began back in the 17th century. That's when the teachers and the students and schools themselves were outlaws. So uh, we're operating a little bit freer today, but we are under some of the same principles. You're only bound to learn what your particular head school teacher might be teaching. Uh, so whether you're listening to me in a car or at home or, uh, or you needed something to doze off to sleep, perhaps... Uh, I hope to help you find your Irish ancestors with, with some tips, and we will begin from the beginning, assuming you know next to nothing, and uh, just build it up from there. So we're going to start with some very simple uh, uh, illustrations, and I'm going to use my family history that I, I've, I've gathered over the last 30 or 40 years and share those tips with you as well as some some basics and uh, most of you will have the beginner's guide to Irish family uh, research with which comes with uh, uh, the CD on Irish genealogy for beginners so that'll help you too I'll be using that right in the beginning of these se sessions and then we'll move on to things that are uh, a little more advanced I'm Michael Laughlin and I wrote the first Irish genealogy book uh, of my career in 1978 I, I then led some tours to Ireland, helping people uh, discover Ireland and their family histories. And I started the first Irish genealogy podcast in 2006. And now I've got a book written on every single county in Ireland. And I've also reprinted, reprinted some classic old history books to, to boot. And uh, we're getting millions of web hits on our web page these days in it's been quite a journey, but I have to remember one thing. This all started before the age of computers, so uh, the computer is not your only resource. I'll be showing you lots of things that don't have anything to do necessarily with the computer, and I'll be telling you how I did it before the age of computers really uh, started. You know, when I first started uh, started this and was given some talks back there in 1978 or so, folks would say, uh, or I'd hear them say, oh, my goodness, you're so young to be doing this. And at the time, that was true. Uh, but now here we are so many years later, and I don't hear that, uh, I don't hear that comment anymore. So uh, the age has, has progressed on me, and uh, I've sure enjoyed every minute of, of it, and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Uh, now we're going to take a look at how it was possible for me to trace two family lines without the aid of a computer. And uh, here's how I did it. Now, on Sunday, we'd visit the family of both uh, my mother and my father's side, uh, the Donahues on my mother's side and the old Lachlans or old Laughlins on my father's side. Now, they'd always tell stories, but they didn't know much about the family history. They didn't know anything about Ireland on the old Laughlin side, but they sure did have a lot of stories and took great pleasure in letting the younger folks know that they knew these stories, and uh, they might lord a few things over you now and then, so one day I was just accidentally reading a travel brochure. It was on Ireland, and it had a little picture there, and it said, O'Loughlin's Castle. Well, that was it for me. It was one week later. I was in Ireland. I had uh, reserved a, uh, uh, a spot at a B&B &B &B by somebody named O'Loughlin, so I figured that was a good start. You go to a bed and breakfast with somebody with your last name, and they might be able to point you in the right direction to family elders or resources, things like that. Uh, now, I didn't have a lot of education on how to do this. Back then, it wasn't quite that popular as it is today. So I got in the car, and I drove parish to parish, and I had asked my bed and breakfast proprietor, who was Monica O'Loughlin, I said, where might I go? She even called a few parish priests ahead of time, and she asked them questions, and sort of said these are areas where a lot of O'Loughlin's might be found in the records. So I drove parish to parish, and one of the places I went to visit was Kilfenora. 
and in that town I had a flat tire. Well, it was a sad thing indeed, but I thought since I was there anyway, I uh, took the car into, there was a local garage there, and they, they, were, they, do, they said they'd change the flat tire for me, so I walked up the hill uh, to where the priest stayed and uh, knocked at the door, got the dog barked at me quite a bit. They finally let me in. And we ended up sitting down and talking for a while, and I imagine he was checking me out to make sure I was uh, an upstanding young man. But I ended up, he escorted me down to the church, unlocked the vault, pulled out the parish register, which I assume was a copy of the original parish register since they were all to be turned in uh, sometime prior to that and turned in to the central government for safekeeping. And, of course, we know how a lot of that worked out. It didn't come out so safe. Uh, but he actually left me alone back there in the sacristy, so to speak, and uh, with the book and said, lock it up when you're done. So I was amazed, and it was a bit chilly. So I was sitting there, and I was going through page by page, and finally I was coming towards the end of the entries, and I felt very sad because I had found nothing, and I thought, well, that's just the luck of the Irish today. But I was paging through, and as I paged through the blank pages at the end of this register, there was a few names, I don't know now if it was 10 or 20 or 30 scattered there at the very end, uh, maybe just one or two names on a page written upside down or at an angle, uh, which means they must have been added just at, at, at random times or perhaps a visiting pastor had just scribbled them down to make a record of it. There was my family, there was Peter O'Loughlin, and uh, you, I, I almost just went through the ceiling. I was so happy. Uh, but I closed the book, left a proper donation, and put it back. And uh, boy, was I, I was just, uh, I was on cloud nine. I couldn't believe that I had gotten there and uh, uh, done it. And like I say, there was no computers involved in those days. Uh, now, and the names were written upside down and backwards. I don't even know if they're on the official registers to this day. Uh, I'll have to check that sometime. But uh, since I saw it in, in real handwriting in the town, I didn't think it was necessary to check on the computer. Uh, now, number two, the second family I was looking for, this is the very same trip. I was looking for the Donahue family, and they did pass down. They were a little bit closer to those Irish roots, and my mother had just passed down to me really one thing that I was able to remember, and that was we were the Donahues of the Glens, and she painted a picture of a man riding on, on horseback back through the glens whatever that was and uh i found out quickly that that meant glen flesk which was near killarney in county Kerry. and uh so i went over there i drove down there after making the great success of the o'laughlin's in county Kerry. i mean in county Clare. i drove down there to Kerry, and i i drove past glen flesk two or three times it wasn't even there i couldn't see it from the road so i i i was i thought it'd be maybe a bigger little town but but from what I could see from the road, there wasn't anything there. I stopped at the church, and the church, at least the one I was looking at there on the road, uh, was closed. And I, that was disappointing, too. But across from the church, just a jump across the road, I ran over there. There was a little store. And I thought, well, this is great. So I went in, and I think I bought an apple. Uh, really, I bought the apple as an excuse to talk to the person at the cash register to say if they knew my family, which, of course... How could they not? We were a famous, famous, outstanding family. I was sure of it. Uh, the O'Donohues of the Glen, we even had a phrase that went with our name. So I stopped and I asked and I said, oh, by the way, uh, do you know anything about the O'Donohues? And they, they looked at each other sort of funny. And I said, the O'Donohues of the Glen, you know, my mother told me the story. My family came from here a hundred years ago. My family was here and she told me stories of the Glen and a horse parading across or racing across the Glen. And they looked at each other kindly, and then they looked at me, and one of them said, we weren't here 100 years ago. And all of a sudden I knew, well, that was quite true. Uh, whoever was there 100 years ago, and whatever their status, uh, people alive today might not have any recollection. So that was enough to quiet me up for a bit. And I went and sat out on the hood of my car and had the apple, and I thought, boy, I just hate to not be able to do this. Uh, my mother's side of the family would be quite disappointed. Uh, <laughs> at least I thought so. Although a few people had done some research before me that I was not aware of. Uh, but I decided I'd go back into the store one more time. And this, you know, just a few people would be dropping by every 10 minutes or so. Uh, so I waited till it was slow. I went back in and kindly asked again. I says, 
Are you sure? Is there a local historian in the area that might be able to help me? And they looked at each other closely again and thought it might be okay. And they told me uh, about uh, Denny Spillane, who lived up the road, and he had taught school, and he, he had had quite of an experience, and he had held on to some records from the area. And uh, uh, it all sounded good to me, and they just sort of gave me some vague directions. So I got in the car, drove that direction, and uh, turned up a hill and thought I found the house, knocked at the door, nobody was there. So I left, and I, as I was driving away, uh, maybe a half a mile away, I saw a gentleman, elderly gentleman, about my age today, I think. And I said, uh, excuse me, uh, would you know anything about the O'Donohues that were here 100 years ago? And he waited a minute or two, and I think he sort of smiled, and then he walked towards me, and we started talking, and uh, we shared some mutual historical interests, so... We went on back to his house, and this time his wife did open the door for us. The first time when I was there alone, I was just some stranger pounding on the door, so she was smart enough not to let me in. But we sat down, and we took the chill off with a small a small little nip of something there and uh, talked for a while, and he brought out, uh, lo and behold, he brought out a copy of the parish register from the church before it closed, and the family was in there, and then he also brought out a list of uh, a passenger list of so many names, uh, which of course I didn't even know if that existed at that time. I was really a neophyte. I was just starting out. And of course we found it all there and I found Kumakullen Mountain and I found the folks that came from Kumakullen Mountain, which were the Donahues. And he even then, we got in the car and we drove up Kumakullen Mountain to the end of the real road and till, and we stopped at the house and he got out and went in and talked to the folks there, which he knew, of course. And he said, well, now we're going to drive on up this road if you want to. And I could barely make it up in the car because it was an old rocky road, sort of like you might find in the Ozark Mountains around here. And we finally got up there and there was uh, an old house. Looks like it had been deserted. Uh, I don't think there was... Uh, Re any windows in the windows, any glass in the windows, and one old fella comes out and uh, smiles, and he was speaking in, in Irish. There was no telephone line either. And so my Denny Splane, my friend, now by this point, got out and talked with him for five or ten minutes on his own, and uh, uh, then he came back and he t he told me that, yeah, he, he the, the fella that was there now, that three or four generations ago, there were Donahues living in that house, and uh, there weren't any more. Uh, but I then it was given permission to get out of the car and take pictures. You know, they might have thought I was a revenuer or uh, or a census taker, and that could be uh, that could be a dangerous profession in those parts the way it felt. <laughs> so, but he was a real friendly fella and got on well and uh, took pictures of that household. Be sure to come back and show those to uh, uh, my mother's people, and it, it was just great. I felt like I had really accomplished something, and. Uh, I got more of a feel from where they came from. So that's the story of how I made two great successes, really, uh, without a computer. There's a lot more I could tell, and I'll sprinkle a little bit in here as we go along with these tips to show you what I found it or how I found it. And then I'll combine it with some of the newer things like DNA and, uh, and the computer and how that's used. But it's really, if somebody had told you you'll get a hundred... A hundred million dollars in your bank account if you trace back your great grandfather or your great great grandfather uh, to Ireland. I think you'd be doing it, and you'd be doing it quick. So, perseverance and determination is really uh, the most important single ingredient, I think, in finding that uh, family tree. So that's the route we're taking today. Uh, once again, thanks for stopping by the uh, head school, and I'm going to do my best. We're going to break this up into seven sessions. And before we uh, move on, I'm going to say that, you know, some names are so very popular. Uh, let's, what, you know, some of the top 10, the top 20 most numerous names in Ireland. If you're researching one of these names, you have some peculiar problems all unto yourself. What would those names be? Well, the top 10 are Murphy, Kelly, Sullivan, Walsh, Smith, O'Brien, Byrne, Ryan, Connor, and O'Neill. The next 10 most common, Riley, Doyle, McCarthy, Gallagher, Doherty, Kennedy, Lynch, Murray, Quinn, and more. And then you got a McLaughlin and all kinds. Of, we've got a list of 100 most popular names in Ireland in uh, uh, that little beginner's guidebook that comes with most of these discs. So 
You might take a look at that and see if you're one of the lucky people that have to contend with special problems of having so many people by the same name. And you've probably found that in America, too. Uh, but before we go any further, there's a, there's a little theme song that I like to uh, bring out. And since this is a hedge school, we can get away with things you can't do in a regular school. So here's a little song that ought to remind you about what we were talking about right then. It's called The Kellys, and it was written back in the 19th century. Three weeks ago last Tuesday, I left me home in Cork to find me Uncle Martin Kelly living in New York. When I landed in Hoboken and began without delay to find me Uncle's residence located in Broadway, I went to their directory, me uncle for to find. But I found so many Kellys there, I nearly lost my mind. Well, I went and asked directions from a friendly German Jew. But he says, please excuse me, but me name is Kelly too. And there's Kelly the barman, Kelly the carman, Kelly the sailor who came from Donegal, Kelly from Derry, Kelly from Kerry, but the Kelly I was looking for I could not find at all. End of session 1A.